So our second category in the 10 principles of economics is how people interact. And again, we're talking about broad strokes economics here, 10 principles of economics. And this is our second category of how people allocate their scarce resources and things that drive how we all as a world, as a planet, as a country, as a community interact. Principle number five is trade can make everyone better off. Okay. A lot of times trade gets a bit of a black eye. Um, you'll hear, hey, buy US, buy this, buy this. Well, if you go in and buy a shirt, do you really honestly look at the tag? I can say that's a behavior that most Americans do not. So trade can make everyone better off, but should we buy all American? Hmm. It's a loaded question. I grew up on a farm, so certainly I hope you buy local beef. But I can honestly say when I go in a store, I look for a shirt that visually appeals to me, um, that solves a problem I have, like I need a new dress shirt or something. But I don't really ever look for the tag and say, you know, made in the USA or made in Mexico or made in Vietnam or made wherever. But I do know trade can make us better off. You see, as a society, we're a pretty advanced society. Let's take the U.S. versus Bangladesh, where a lot of t-shirts are actually made. The U.S. is highly educated, highly technological, and highly advanced. Think about our last set of principles. Opportunity cost was included in there. If we take a highly educated, highly advanced, highly technical society, and have it make t-shirts all day, what's our opportunity cost? Could be the cure for cancer. Could be developing biopharmaceuticals. Could be sending people into outer space. You see, our time is valuable. That's not to say you can't make a good t-shirt. I'd say, you know, the U.S., if they decided they want to be the t-shirt capital of the planet, we'd be the best at it, no doubt. But we're capable of more. So our opportunity cost of making t-shirts is biopharmaceuticals. And I know trade makes me better off every time I go into the local grocery store and there's a pineapple. I'm recording this in the upstate of South Carolina. You can't grow a pineapple within a few thousand miles of here. But I can run to an Ingalls that's 10 minutes from my house and have my selection of pineapples that were growing in either Costa Rica or Hawaii three days ago. Isn't that amazing? Trade makes me better off. I remember as a child growing up, we'd actually get some oranges for Christmas. Oranges are grown as close as Florida. It's not it's two, two states over. But we couldn't always get citrus in the dead of winter. My life's better off. I can get citrus 365 days out of the year. So trade can make everyone better off. In chapter 3, we're going to talk about interdependence and the gains from trade. And it's going to drive this point home. But I'm here to tell you, we're more productive when we do what we're best at doing. And let's think about the people in Bangladesh. Their choices aren't biopharmaceuticals or t-shirts. Their choices are making t-shirts in a factory, even if it's for pennies on the dollar. I'm not advocating using child labor or wo woefully underpaid labor. But I am saying their choices working in those factories are starving. What do you think they would prefer? I don't look at the tag. I honestly don't. I look in, I look at the price, I say, hey, visually I want that shirt. I look at the price tag and I say, you know what, I can afford that. Or, whoo, that's too expensive, no thank you. Or, mm, let me think about it. That's the only three things I can have, all right? But if that thing's a good deal and it's appealing to me, off the rack, it's coming with me, I'm going to buy it. Trade can make everyone better off. Now, we can talk about ways it can make us worse off, too. But generally speaking, if people are acting rationally, trade will make you better off. Principle number six, markets are usually a good way to organize economic activity. What are we talking about here? The market economy. Well, what is that? Simple. It's a place anywhere. A physical place, a virtual place, where buyers and sellers come together. It's where... The seller, the supplier, is looking to maximize their profits. It tries to find equilibrium with the buyer who's looking for the best possible deal. We'll talk about supply and demand in this class as well. The market economy is where they come together.
All right. It can be as simple as your local grocery store, your local retailer. Uh, it can be Amazon.com. I hear a lot of people say, you know, Amazon is a behemoth, and it is a behemoth, a very rich behemoth, but a very lucrative behemoth. But it's also a marketplace. I can go on there this afternoon and start selling whatever I want. It's a pretty impressive market economy. Okay, So the market economy is a good thing. And think about it. Everyone has a mall that's not so great, and then they have kind of a shopping center or a mall that's really awesome. What makes the one that's really awesome better than the one that's not so great? I wager to say the one that's not so great has limited sellers, limited buyers, and the one that's really, really good has a lot of both. Great stores, great variety, lots of customers. No one has market power, the buyers and sellers, they're interacting. It's awesome. It's the market economy. We'll learn a lot about that in this class. So the final principle under the heading of how people interact is principle number seven. Government can sometimes, and I emphasize sometimes here, improve market outcomes. They're the referee. I'm a big sports fan. I like basketball, I like football, I like baseball. The best games are when the ref is seen but not heard from a lot. When they're calling a lot of penalties, when they're calling a lot of fouls, when they're affecting the strike zone, that type of thing. It's just not enjoyable to watch. But when can the government get involved? All right. Well, governments are required to establish things like property rights. Property rights means something is yours, a patent, uh, a title to a car, and they enforce them. So if someone steals your car, you have recourse. You can call the cops. They can track it down. Hopefully they find it. If they don't, uh, either way, they can penalize the people um, in terms of criminal sentence that took it. Uh, and then you can even pursue them legally for civil damages. Okay? If you get a million-dollar idea, the first thing you're going to do, put a patent on that bad boy. All right. Once you've got a patent, it's yours. All right. So the government provides that. They can also help out market failure. A lot of people are like, market failure, is that some kind of catastrophe? No. If I go down to my local grocery store and they're out of my favorite bread, that's a market failure technically. Now, it's not the end of the world because we live in a great economy where we're such, it's such a beautiful representation of a market economy, of capitalism. We don't have bread lines. Bread is waiting on me, so I can usually find a pretty suitable replacement. All right. Market failure is when a community needs a hospital and doesn't have it. Market failure is when a community needs healthy food options and they do not have it. That's a role for government. They can step in in those situations and help out. They can choose equality over efficiency. When there's an externality, now what's an externality? An externality is if you're a college student and you live in on-campus housing or an off-campus apartment, and all you ever hear from your neighbor is boom, boom, doo -doo 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 -doo, three in the morning when you're trying to go to bed for your big exam the next day. That's a market uh, externality. You're a third party being affected negatively by someone else who's not compensating you for your time. Okay, so your sleep is off just because someone's being selfish. It's also if a steel mill pollutes the air and a little kid gets asthma. You can also have, so those are negative market externalities. You can also have positive ones. If you've ever been to Hershey, Pennsylvania, that name Hershey, what does that bring up? Hershey bars. If you step out your car in Hershey, Pennsylvania, it smells like chocolate. I didn't pay for that. I once went there, stepped out of my car. Ooh, smelled like my Mima just took cookies right out of the oven. I didn't pay for that. I enjoyed it. It was a positive externality. So you can have positive externalities as well. You can be, oh, you could live next to a baseball stadium where you don't have to buy a ticket, but you can glimpse the game. Or next to a concert venue and you can hear the music. That's awesome. It's externality, positive or negative. The government can step in in externalities, primarily negative ones and require the steel mill to stop polluting the air so kids don't get sick. Um, your RA or your landlord can step in and make a rowdy neighbor settle down. Okay, There's a role for a referee there. There's a role for government. Now market power. 
market power. When some organization has too much market power, they can become a duopoly, an oligopoly, or a monopoly. So a monopoly is when there's one firm controlling everything. Okay, And if they're controlling everything, they can charge whatever they want. So there's a role for the referee there. But again, as any good sports fan knows, the role for the referee in basketball is not to be blocking shots and shooting free throws. It's to put the right people in the right situations to make sure there's just cause, to enforce property rights, to step in if there's a market failure, to help with externalities, and to ensure that no one has too much market power. The government can sometimes improve market outcomes as the referee. And we know market outcomes come from a market economy. And we know that if we get in that economy, whether it's trade between me and Bangladesh, myself in Florida for citrus, South Carolina and California with tourism, trade can make everyone better off. And this is how people interact under the broad 10 principles of economics. Thank you.